And welcome to another edition of the Nerdy Agent Podcast. I'm your host, Luke Pedersen, with just one brother and fellow nerd today, AJ, because we have a special guest. Josh is out of the podcast. Today, we do have two special guests with us, Dave and Amanda from House Novel. Welcome. We're excited to have you. you. We are going to dive into their company today and talk about the value they can add for you, the listener, mostly for real estate agents, but also for homeowners in general. Um, and we're really excited to get into it. So this week, though, instead of a would you rather, we are going to stick to the topic of houses and just ask a general question. Um, what is your favorite style of home? And Amanda and Dave are experts at this. So experts. That's why that's why this excited is excited to hear not what a, they have to say. Would you rather, but yeah, armchair experts at this sort of yeah. thing. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> my wife loves that podcast. You want to go first? Uh, sure. Amanda? My obvious choice is Italianate. I mean, they're just iconic when you look at them. They're giant, bold. Their roofs almost look flat with brackets. They have giant, tall, rounded windows. And I just think that when you see an Italianate house, you're like, dang, look at that house. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> where, yeah, do you, where, do you, where do you find them? Um, a prime example is the old Four Paws Mansion in St. Yeah. Paul. It's oh, there are some here. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, they were actually um, popular. They were, they started in the 16th century in Italy, and then they were popularized in the U.S. in the 19th century. So you'll really see, like, the gold mine in the 1800s. And I think the Four Paws Mansion in St. Paul is, like, an 1880s something yep. like that. And it was converted from a private residence to apartments to a restaurant called the Four Paws. And oh, now sweet. it's sitting vacant again, but it is incredible. Yeah, exactly. So there's, it's a style of Victorian, yep. right? Mm-hmm. So there's Psyched Empire, there's Italianate, there's different sort of styles of um, Victorian homes. There, oh. You know, the Victorian era, it's more of like an era than it is an architectural style. So there's how all these like subgroups that you would see in it. So, you know, a lot of what we see in the Twin Cities, you have all these, um, you know, especially in St. Paul, all these awesome Victorian homes that have, you know, your turrets and like, you know, big front porches and everything. So that's kind of like your second empire style. Um, and that's what I really love. And I would love to remodel one of those. Um, we have, we get over to Stillwater quite a bit, which is just outside the Twin Cities, um, for those of us who are not in Minnesota. <laughs> um, and it is, you know, they have just have these amazing homes over there. And the one that I really love um, that I talk about a lot is just taking a Victorian and making it a little bit different, right? So, you know, taking... Uh, kind of your, your your style Victorian, paint it black, and I know we've talked about this before. It's very controversial, um, but then also you know incorporating the inside, you know, blending like the past with the present. You know, there's a lot of things in those homes that maybe not the best for families today, but really reworking it and not removing all the character, but being able to you know really b- blend the past with the present. Yeah, you can get a Gothic Victorian. I mean. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I'm starting to think that we might have to have them back on the podcast a second time solely to talk about the history of house styles. Oh, totally. In different eras. I think that'd be really cool. We could start in like anything in Minneapolis, like 1850 or 1875 or 1880, and then go all the way through present day would actually be kind of fun for agents to learn about that. And they could actually talk about that with their clients. For sure. What's, what's I think convenient here for them is that they're married and they like the same style of house. Yeah. Thank goodness for that. Yeah. Right. right? Otherwise oh you might God. have a weird looking property. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> well, half of it's Victorian and half of it's mid-century modern. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> um, do you want me to go next? Go okay, ahead. Luke. Well, mine's the Victorian. So, and me and my wife are, are, our dream in life, I would say, is to find a super rundown old Victorian and fix it up um, ourselves while we're living there. And maybe we end up painting it black. The, yeah. f- the funny thing is we were actually in uh, San Diego two weekends ago, and we were in Coronado. And yeah. so we were just walking around one day, just looking at all of the houses, and we saw one that was painted black. Yeah, what'd you think? It was really cool. Right? Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. Those, and the houses in Coronado are they're a dream. They're unbelievably amazing that's so. super cool what do you got? well so my wife's big into french colonial so that's kind of the vibe we're trying uh, yeah. to do with a remodel on our outside of our house um but i i like converted structures so i know you mentioned a converted structure that you guys have um recently came across on a tv show i think but i've seen like converted banks converted churches 
where they rework different spaces in there and you end up with like living rooms that you never would have in a regular house because it just doesn't make sense to build them that way. So um, seeing people take spaces that were intended for something else and turn them into something different, it's really cool. I've seen schools, yeah, you know, big schools. I, I came across a, a reel that they converted a school into apartment complex. Oh, yeah, totally. Which is super neat. And I think a lot of that's probably going to be coming. So it's just super fun to see people not just tear structures down, but like rework them into something more functional. Yeah, exactly. We, we partner with an organization called Rathos, which is kind of the lobbying arm for the historic tax credits of Minnesota. So they, you know, they have a bunch of programs to help people reuse buildings um, and be able to apply for historic tax credits. And I know, I think in Minnesota, those actually went away for the time being. Um, but hopefully they can bring some of those back. But yeah, reworking some of, you know, the schoolhouses, Main Street, like what you guys have here in downtown Hopkins, you know, reworking some of these buildings into kind of like more live workspaces um, and really like revitalizing some of these old structures. Super, super cool. cool. Yeah. I mean, we should, maybe our next project should be an old abandoned school building in St. Louis Park. Are there any Ooh. of those? Pro <laughs> probably somewhere. Yeah. 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 Um, all right, let's get into the, uh, important stuff of the day. So, uh, for those who don't know, Amanda and Dave, uh, run a website called house novel. Um, and we are going to get into the ins and outs of that. So just to start, can you introduce yourselves and tell us about the basics of the company? Yeah. So we are Dave and Amanda, and we like to call ourselves hip historians. We believe mm -hmm. that home history should be really fun and approachable for everyone. And we created house novel to reflect this. So it's your go-to home history resource, and it not only layers public data, but also incorporates personal stories, photos, information, all that jazz on an interactive timeline so you can see the home's full backstory and full before your eyes. Yeah, we like to say if Zillow and Ancestry.com had a baby, it'd be us. And so every house in the U.S., um, you're able to create an interactive timeline. You can go in and put your own information in. You can research. We can help you research. Um, and then other people can add to it. So you can share it with your friends and family and the community because, you know, there's these houses that have a lot of lives. And, you know, specifically for agents, I mean, do you guys ever get the question, so what's the story with that house or with this oh, house? Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time. Yeah. yeah. What do you usually say to them? Uh, Who knows? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, unless they've lived there for a long time, right? Like there's not, there's, there's not a lot that we have to go off as agents to say who lived there, what was going on, yeah. what their story was. So usually, usually they don't disclose the information on the history of the house <laughs> to like wh who lived there, what, mm -hmm. the stuff they don't need to legally. Sure, yeah. And so we want to make it easy for agents. So you can just go in and type in any, uh, any address and then, you know, if we have information on it, it'll pop up and you can just kind of like, you know, casually say, hey, you know, this is what happened throughout the years and this is this remodel, this is how it was originally built, you know, these are some really interesting facts about the house and so you look like the expert. Yeah, it's awesome. And you've given a little bit of like the backstory on why you started it, but like what's the real inspiration for all of this and kind of how did you go about starting the company? Well, it all happened during COVID when everyone had a little more downtime and you find yourselves on a ton of nature walks. And that's where we kept on looking at like cool houses on these long walks being like, what is the story with that house? I would love to know more about it. And before House Novel, looking into any home history beyond the face value facts was incredibly difficult. It was really time consuming, dispersed, and usually incomplete. And so we just wanted to figure out a way where people could find these answers in one spot while also highlighting all the moments that really do make a house a home. Yeah, exactly. And then we really solidified it when we were at my mom's apartment. And so I grew up in this early 1900s farm home or farmhouse over in Highland Park, which is uh, an area of St. Paul. Um, and so my parents spent 17 years remodeling this house and they were doing it themselves and we were living there, like what you were saying. It's a little traumatizing for a kid, mm -hmm. like to put them through that big a remodel. Noted. noted. Yeah. Yeah. So just, just want to put that up there. Yeah. One of the things that Amanda and I always talk about is like, I didn't have walls for like the first, for at least five years of my childhood. Um, and then I remember my dad like hauling up like one of those, um, you know, those like cast iron like tubs and like he had like a pulley system to do it himself. Oh, and so you got a lot to look forward to with yeah, doing your right. remodel. Um, but anyways, uh, they spent 17 years on it and she painted it bright orange and it had this big front porch and it was, you know, amazing. Right. And unfortunately, she lost it to foreclosure in 2011 and then it was torn down. 
um, because the lots in that neighborhood, you know, they, it's, uh, you know, it's, they go for a lot and then um, they needed a bigger house. It was only about 900 square feet, 1,000 square feet on three levels. Um, so what we did was we were going through all these pictures and Amanda was seeing it for the first time. I'm like, God, there gotta be somewhere we can put these, right? It's like, Facebook is okay. But then, you know, they'd have to know us that we live there, and there's not really a good system to geocode any of this. So that's where we came up with House Novel. It's like, hey, let's just make it easy for everyone to go in and share their family stories, stories that they have on the house, because we have amazing photos just collecting dust from, like, the 1970s, right? And, like, we don't know what to do with them. And if my mom passes away, like, we don't know what to, you know, I don't know where they would end up. So at least now, even though the house was torn down, you know, our family memories are saved somewhere, and it makes me feel good, right? I can go in and type in her address and see old photos of my parents, you know, remodeling the house. And there's probably millions of people with the same story, right? I mean, yeah. like, every good company seems to start from this internal motivation of why they wanted to do something. Yeah. And that's what we can, obviously, we've met you guys several times and just see the passion behind it. It's super cool. Yeah, you know, I, we, we love this stuff, right? I mean, we talk about it all day long every day and just you know i always run out to the man i'm like look what i just found in this house right and it's like amazing old photos or news articles or you know just all this like gold that somebody probably wants to know hopefully so i want to talk about the um kind of the back end of the website as well kind yeah. of how you're getting information because one of the things you did mention um when we were chatting about it was that you are also not only are relying on homeowners to enter their information, put the info they have about it, but you also have some, you're grabbing data to get about the houses in general, especially in the Twin Cities market because that's where it's been rolling out. Mm -hmm. So can you talk about kind of what that process looks like on getting the, some houses might have information already essentially? Yeah, a lot of the public data is so hyper-localized. So it's really about pulling in from all the local historical societies, the National Register of Historic Places, and every entry um, that people put in or that we put in you can put in specifically where you pulled that information from with the source that you found it so that we can make sure that people know exactly where to find out more information about it as well. And then we also put an algorithm so that when we initially created our website, it was about scrubbing as much information that we could find to have a base layer so that people, when they did go into our website and search for the address, they could get really excited and be like, oh my gosh, something is on my house with the National Register of Historic Places and I know something more about this and I can be the next one to solve this mystery on whatever else there may be. Yeah, exactly. So we went through and we pulled in data from the Library of Congress, uh, Minnesota Historical Society, Hennepin County Library System, Ramsey County Library System, um, anywhere that we could find you know, data, pictures on old houses. And then, uh, so yeah, like Amanda was saying, that's the base layer. And then people are layering on top of that. So we see like amazing things come in. Um, not too long ago, we just saw like a just awesome like original watercolor rendering of what the house was going to be like in like the 1920s. You know, we see family photos of, especially we've been working in Edina quite a bit, which is a suburb of Minneapolis, and they have a really great country club neighborhood over there that's historic and it's on a national register of historic properties. Um, but they did a inventory of all the houses and it's in one PDF document that's like 100 pages. So we took all of it out of it and geocoded each one of the houses. So all the homeowners now have uh, a black and white photo of their house from, you know, like the 1960s. And so we're doing a lot of those sorts of things because there is a lot of really good data out there. It's just extremely hard to find. Don't you love how that neighborhood in Edina, they, they, you can't tear the houses down. Yeah, exactly. It's so cool. So there's like, there's all these brand new houses that are like insulating this like one little pocket that yes. they have to keep the old exactly. house there. And what we're finding in Edina, you know, outside the country club neighborhood as well, uh, where you can tear down the houses, a lot of the people who are selling their homes, and you guys probably see this as well, it's like their kids selling the home, or it's the parents selling their home and like moving into a senior living mm -hmm. or their next step or whatever, but they built that house. And so we kind of know it's going to be torn down probably at some point. Um, so we've had our users in our community go in and just be like, hey, I just want to like save what this looks like and save this piece of our family history that was there. Like we have one user who went in and it showed his parents on the front doorstep of when it was first built and then it being torn down. 
And I'm just like, oh, mm. that's it's it's really interesting. And we kind of know that's going to happen in some of these neighborhoods. But it's just a great place to be able to save some of that information. Super cool. And I think that that piece is um, can be very valuable for agents as well. That's why I wanted to bring that up, just because if you're a real estate agent that uh, you have a transaction closing in a few weeks, or I think you had mentioned even you had someone bring information to a listing uh, presentation, which can be amazing for the sellers or for your buyers. You can go on this website, you can enter in the address and you can maybe find some stuff that's already been scrubbed and stuff that you can provide to your buyer, provide to your seller. Um, that would be significantly different than what the majority of real estate agents in this market will um, be able to bring for their clients. Yeah. And we actually have um, one of the products that we have on our website is geared towards that. So it's geared towards, um, you know, we'll do some of the home history and we'll put together a really nice packet for the open house. And we're able to, you know, the Twin Cities come out and talk to about home history and those sorts of things. But then it also advertises for real estate agents as well. So we put your name on it. You, they have a takeaway of everything. You know, there's a big kind of like ad in the back for you. And it's like, you know, I'm sponsoring home history because I really love this neighborhood and blah, 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 those sorts of things. And then we also, you know, talk to our community about it. And then we also put our Instagram. So we really want to partner with, with real estate agents for those sorts of things. Tell well, us more. I was going to say, tell us about like that process, yes. right? Like what if an agent's like, hey, Can I got a list. Talk about that up. product a little bit further. Sure. Go ahead. So, so. This product that you're talking about, that's not just what you have on your website, is it? You, do you then, because we have someone who has done, you know, house history yeah. books for us. Is sure. it kind of like that where you do the research and put it in the book or is it the information you have on the site? Like, can you tell what the product is specifically just so agents understand? Yeah. So we've created kind of a three different level situation. So the first is that, hey, we just want you to research this home's full history and put it on the website. QR code, but they can go in and directly learn more about it to draw enough of a personal connection to it. And then we have the next level where it's like, I want to give this as a closing gift to someone that's just purchased a new home. And so we do a watercolor rendering of the house in front and then input all of its history. So they have a takeaway book that showcases the entire history of their home. And then there's the third level where it's like, hey, I want to actually have this as a display in my open house, do the branded QR codes, sponsor the home profile, and put ads up for my for sale ads so that as soon as someone goes in and searches that home address, you can see that home listing pop up, linking directly to all of your home information for the listing details as well as your About Us page um, so they can get in contact with that real estate agent. Exactly. And so it's not only information that we have on our website. We also have a full-time researcher. So they will go in and spend hours combing through old newspapers and uh, finding original photos, hopefully, original floor plans. Uh, specifically, we're testing out here in the Twin Cities, and the library system has this amazing books of architecture styles that were built in kind of this area in Hopkins and St. Louis Park and Edina and, you know, Minneapolis. And so we go in and pull out all those architecture original designs and all those sorts of things and put together a really nice product for you guys um, that you're able to talk to at your open house. Um, that advertises you as you know someone who cares and then also um, We do as much as we can to support you on our side as well, you know coming doing the open house You know we want to be able to partner with you on it put you on our social media talk to you more about it Come on your podcast do whatever you like us to do So we're really excited about this one We actually just did one for the Commodore and it was super cool because we found a bunch of old Scott Fitzgerald newspaper clips and then airline clips from the 1950s of when all the flight attendants were staying there, the fire that happened to it, pictures yeah, of old cars up. in the front, both from like the early 1900s, the 1950s, 70s. So it's super cool to see how that whole building evolved, even what the downstairs bar looked like at different points in time. That's awesome. And and as an agent, if they want, like if an agent's listening right now and wants to say, hey, I got an upcoming list and I'd like to do this. Is there just an easy way to click through on the website? Do they email you or what's the process for that? Yeah, right now, just get in touch with us at info at housenovel.com or reach out to us directly. Info at housenovel.com. There you have it. Um, what is the long-term goal? Because I know you're you're in the Twin Cities market right now. We've chatted about you wanting to get into other markets as well. What does that kind of look like moving forward? I would say the next big thing now that we've kind of nailed down the Minneapolis area is probably expand into 10 cities with the most history so that we can start getting into those hot pockets. Um, I would say that 
for my top two next favorites would be New Orleans and oh, yeah. Palm Springs. Just kind of a little bit of a polar opposite situation there. For sure. Yeah, that's great. And ultimately through this journey, we just want to draw enough of a personal connection to all these homes to prevent those teardowns and get people really excited because everyone can be a historian. Hip story, and I love that term. That's fantastic. Um, and, and we've talked about, obviously, it's housenovel.com is the website. How else are people going to find you? What's the best way for them to get involved? Um, again, they could send an email to the info um, email address or social media. Like, are you guys on all different social medias, I'm assuming? Yeah, check us out on Instagram, just at housenovel. Um, I followed. Yes. Oh, good. Thank you. I saw so, that. Yeah. I followed you back. Haley, we got to follow them on Instagram f- so you can do that. We and already do. For the, from, a, from, I guess, an outsider perspective as well, if you just go on their website, you can register your house in like 30 seconds. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I registered both of ours very quickly. It, it wasn't very difficult. So. Yeah. You know, what we want to do is kind of a next phase. So we have housenovel.com is fully built out. So when users go on, they'll see a search bar to search any address in the US. If we have information, it'll pop up or information around you as well. We have a lot of really good neighborhood photos as well. Um, But what we want to do is, you know, enact our next step of this whole thing is when you do register your house, we can be like, hey, do you need help? And then so we're coming Mm -hmm. up with like a lot of different documentation for you to be able to do it yourself. So I'm putting together this hopefully not too long of book about how we're able to... It's getting pretty long. Yeah, it's getting really long. Um, so I'm going to try to shorten it up. But, you know, to, for you to be able to go on and research your house for free, and it's all the tips and tricks that we've learned and, like, the best way to be able to do it, um, you know, through, like, U.S. Census, you know, searching the library system, pulling in, like, you know, even if you go to, like, ownerly.com, like, looking through all that stuff and how to put it all together. Because House Novel is really a great outline of like how to take a look or like for all the information for your home. Um, so we want to offer those that. So we, you know, can teach you how to do it free tips and tricks to go on and do it. Or we can do it for you. You know, what would be sweet too beyond just doing the instructional book is to do like a coffee table book. Like yeah. House Novel's top 20 homes. That's a great idea. Type deal. And it's just a coffee table book that people are picking up and just flipping through some different houses on there for your top picks. Yeah. The only problem is, is how do you narrow it down? We're going to be it's doing tough. this forever. I know, right? It is House tough. House 500. Oh yeah, my God, right. This is the best <laughs> one. How many do we have in the U.S. now? We have like 21,000 or something, right? Yeah. I mean, even just in Minneapolis, when you like search for an address and we see all of our little houses pop up, we're like, ooh. Just yeah, just exactly. little icons. I think yeah. that'd be great marketing, though. You could make that book and just like drop it off in coffee shops. Oh my yeah. gosh. Would you just go on like Vista Print. You, you just show up, have a coffee and forget it there. I just they wouldn't even know. Yeah, well, oh, <laughs> I, I love what you're saying. Yeah, right exactly. Now. Yeah. It's just kind of fun. Or we could do it by area as too. well. So oh, if you guys wanted idea. to do like, and we could work with, you know, this is kind of spur of the moment. But yeah, you know, we could work with agents like yourself and be like, hey, let's come up with like our top 10 for this little, you know, this area here at Hopkins, St. Louis Park, Edina. And let's just go drop it off at a bunch of places. Yeah, especially if you see a really cool inside with a hidden staircase. Yes, like exactly. Downstairs. Please yeah. let us know. Seen it before. Yeah. We see all sorts of stuff. You know, my my favorite line is uh, um, if you run into a, a tricky situation in a house or you see something that's like a little bit off or weird that you always have to explore it. I tell every client. I'm like, if there's a pull down ladder or if oh, there yeah. is a hidden gate underneath something in the in the kitchen, like we're going down there. We have to oh, just you check have it to? out. Well, you right? know, these houses are just perfectly imperfect and they're like cats. They have nine lives and mm-hmm. we just got to showcase all of them, right? Exactly. For exactly. sure. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. So our last bonus question is for Amanda. Yeah. What's it like to be a tech startup CEO? Polar opposite than anything I'd ever done prior to this. I got to say, I used to be like head forward, you know, looking straight here, trying to be perfect in what I do. And now this has been a really good testament to just go out there, take risks, know nothing, and learn everything that you possibly can, and a lot of Googling. And yeah. What were you doing before this? Oh, I was in <laughs> marketing before this. I was in commercial real estate with Dave, and I was heading um, the marketing for commercial real estate colliers, and then I also did um, marketing for JLL. So Super cool. A, so real estate, real estate related, but you're definitely stretching your brain now. Yes. Yeah. Super cool. That's fantastic. Well, thank you so much for coming on yes, our podcast. You. We're thank excited. You. And again, any agents out there, just Google House Novel, go on this site, info at House Novel to mm-hmm. email you if you need anything. You can also find them on Instagram, House Novel. It's pretty easy. I found them pretty quickly. So thanks again for coming on. And as always, to our listeners, remember, be better. Be better.